Ooh, guys, you're not even going to believe what NAR is saying now when it comes to steering. Okay, They came out with their FAQs. Um, this was about a month ago when they came out with this, and they talked about this at their legislative uh, meeting uh, You know, over the past couple of weeks. And I read through the entire FAQs, okay? So I read through the entire thing. I'm going to share with you guys today an article that literally pinpoints the main, the main subjects here that I want to address, okay? Because what they're saying here is completely contradictive to reality when it comes to what's actually going to happen. This is, this is real. This is going to happen, okay? Steering is going to happen, not in the sense of agent steering. See, the definition of steering is when an agent, right, discourages a buyer from looking at or making offers on houses with a lower buyer agent cooperative commission offered. That's not what I'm talking about here. All right. So you're really going to find this interesting. And as we approach as we get closer and closer to the August 17th date, when all the new rules are set to come into effect, we need to be educated. Because I said this from day one, when all this started to happen, when the trial was going on last year and I was covering it and all that, I said, I said, make no mistake, I will crush this new market, which isn't going to look a lot different. However, there are going to be some new rules. And, and, and this is what I said, quote, just show me what the new rules are and step right up out my way and watch me crush it, okay? And this is what I want for you. This is the mentality that I want for you because the market is the market. We get paid a commission that is worth less than the value that we provide less than the value that we provide, okay? That's why people are willing to pay. People don't pay commissions. People don't pay for anything that's worth less than the money that they pay, ever. That's why they pay the money. They value what they're buying with the money more than the money. Otherwise, they would keep the money. So the fact is, is that the market is the market and what we get paid now is worth way more than the money that what we do now is worth way more than the money that we get paid. So the amount we get paid is not going to change. All right. It's not. Uh, it, will it look differently? Sure. Will there be buyers that you may or may not work with? Sure. Will the, the way that we negotiate and uh, explain things to people will change? Yes. But isn't it always changing? Isn't it always changing? Ask yourself that, right? The, the lending regulations that came out, change, change, it completely changed things dramatically with the way that we operate. That was a change in the industry that's not, it's, it's indirectly uh, related to us, right? It's directly slash indirectly. It was a, it was a, it was a policy in a different industry, let's, you know, a different industry. Real estate's the industry. It's a different niche in the industry. You've got the real estate niche, right? And then you've got the mortgage niche. When the mortgage rules change, that affected us. Prices, inventory, right? I mean, for example, the conversations you're having with buyers and sellers this year, is it not different than the conversations you had last year? And weren't those conversations different than you had the year before? right? Based on supply, inventory, prices, etc. right? The conversations are always going to change. Okay. It's always going to change. Show me the new rules, step out of the way and watch me crush it. But I want to get into this article. This is from housing wire. And, uh, this really hit, hit the main points of what I want to talk about today. So, uh, so let, let's dive right in here. So NAR addresses steering in latest settlement agreement update. All right, the trade association says steering is eliminated. Okay, they say it's eliminated. Think about that. It will cease to exist by its commission lawsuit settlement agreement. So, you know, they're wanting the settlement, you know, the settlement agreement. They want this thing to go through, man. They're ready for this to be over. And they want to put this behind them so that we can get on get on past it 
and uh, get back to focusing on the things that matter. So the National Association of Realtors addressed concerns of agent steering in its latest update to its commission lawsuit uh, settlement FAQs. The topic of steering when a buyer's agent or broker prevents buyers from seeing homes that offer commissions lower than uh, than is typical for a market, okay, which that is impossible in today's world where everything's out there on the on the internet and buyers see the house they want to see. They don't care what the commission is. They want to see it. They want to see it. You can't not show them a home they want to see in today's world. That may exist. That may this this may have actually happened 40 years ago. Right, where we're moving towards in a market where there may be a lot more off-market properties, maybe due to what's going on, that's going to cause steering, if nothing else. The disclosure and transparency of everything being online and more importantly in the same portal where you can see everything makes it to where you can't steer. I digress. It's where a buyer's agent or broker prevents buyers from seeing homes that offer commissions lower than is typical for a market or discourages buyers from considering homes that offer lower commissions as well as. OK, so they take it a step further as well as they count. This is steering, I guess, when a listing agent makes sellers fearful that if they don't offer cooperative compensation, buyers and their agents will avoid their property. Now, pay attention to what it says there. The word that it says, it says buyers. Buyers will avoid their property. It says buyers and their agents will avoid their property. But it says the word buyers will avoid their property. I want you to remember that as we move forward. So this came up in NAR's mid-year legislative meeting last month. Okay, according to the NARS FAQ update, the business practice changes outlined in the Trade uh, Association's Commission Lawsuit Settlement Agreement eliminate any theoretical steering. Okay, <laughs> this is this like an oxymoron, like eliminate, cease to exist, any theoretical, so imaginary. <laughs> this, this will cease to exist any imaginary steering. NAR argues that be, by requiring agents to have signed a buyer representation uh, agreement with clients uh, prior to taking them on a virtual virtual or in-person home tour. So you got to get it signed if you're going to do a virtual tour, I guess. Agents will not be able to steer buyers to certain listings that have uh, higher offers of co compensation. Well, you can't really do that now, all right, the way it is. Uh, but they're saying that they won't be able to opt to, to steer uh, buyers to certain listings um, because the buyer's agent will already know their compensation on the transaction as it must be outlined in the buyer representation agreement. And so basically they're saying that, that because there's this agreement, all right, because there's this agreement that the buyers, uh, the buyer has signed with the buyer agent, spelling out what that compensation is going to be. Basically, what NAR says is that at that point, there's no way that steering can exist whatsoever because the 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 agent already knows the commission that they're going to receive. Okay, okay, that that's fair. That's fair from the agent standpoint. But what about the buyer? So if they sign a buyer agency agreement and it says, I'm going to pay, you know, the, the buyer agent's going to get, let's just say 3%, right? Let's just do hypothetical. Let's throw it out there. 3%, all right? And then you're looking at homes. This home right here, these three homes offer 3% to the buyer agent, right? But then these four homes, they are offering zero, or maybe they offer 1%, maybe 1.5%. So on those homes, the, the buyer is going to have to come up with the difference. If it's one and a half, the buyer is going to have to come up with the other one and a half as spelled out in the buyer agency agreement. Or if it's zero offered to the buyer agent, then they're going to have to come up with all three on top of buying the house if they can't get it negotiated into the deal with the seller. Okay, so think about this for a second, right? If a buyer is looking at three homes that offer 3% and four homes that don't, 
which ones do you think the buyer is going to want to see, right? Now, they may love the four homes, right? And the price may work out to even if they pay that extra one or two percent or three percent, they're still getting a better deal. So there's all that to be considered as well. But let's say it's all apples to apples. We're looking at all homes in the same neighborhood, same size home, same prices, just different paint colors or something, different countertops, right? Maybe uh, one has a fence, uh, et cetera. Really small differences in the properties, same prices. And which houses do you think the buyer is going to see? Well, they're just going to see the ones with the 3% included in the price. So the buyer is going to be the one that steers themselves to those properties, right? And, and this is what I think, and they go deeper here. They go deeper here. But if you remember up here, I said that the, the, the definition that they stated was not just that the agents will avoid their property, but that buyers. So we're not supposed to tell a, a listing agent is not supposed to tell a seller or make a seller fearful that they don't have cooperative compensation. Why? Because all the buyers sign buyer agreements saying that they're going to pay the commission no matter what. Well, up here you said, but what about the buyers that want to go to the houses that offer the buyer a commission? You said here that the buyers, right? The buyers will avoid their property. Well, that's true, right? How can we not make a, a seller fearful, right? How can we not make a seller fearful that they won't that they won't have buyers come look at their house if they don't offer a, 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 a competitive compensation, right? If it's true, how can we, how can we not paint that picture? It's going to be easy to paint. Okay, written buyer agreements required by the NAR practice changes that will be implemented on August 17th, 2024. Is that actually locked in? Because they had it for June and then they push it to August. I haven't heard that that's actually, I mean, as of right now, I guess we're gunning for it. Maybe it'll happen, but I don't know that I've heard that everybody's on board with that. Um, the DOJ, the, uh, the plaintiffs, the lawyers, I haven't really heard. Um, uh, the written buyer agreements, you know, this is required. It will also outline that the MLS participants may not receive compensation for brokerage services from any source that exceeds the amount or rate agreed to in the agreement with the buyer. So wait a minute, if I sign an agreement with the buyer saying that I'm going to get 2%, 2.5%, even 3%, and the seller uh, and the listing uh, is actually offering me say three and a half. I can't, I can't get three and a half. I got to, I can only get the amount that's in my buyer agency agreement. Now they go on to address this in a minute and, and you'll find this interesting. The FAQ state, since a broker working with the buyer cannot receive more compensation than the buyer has already agreed to in that agreement, the amount of any offer of compensation is irrelevant to the buyer broker compensation. This is crazy because like they're saying this here, they're saying that because the buyer's agent can't receive any more than what is agreed on in the buyer agency agreement, then what does it matter? It's irrelevant. But yet later on in this article, you'll see they actually say the exact opposite. This is insane. This is, this tells you like the, the level of, uh, the level, the, the level of the cluster here that we're in with this whole thing. The updated FAQs also address steering done by listing agents. According to NAR, listing brokers should inform their sellers about costs the buyers will incur, how the buyer might react to those costs, and how the seller can market a house considering the buyer costs. But a listing broker must not tell a seller that a broker will steer buyers based on the amount that broker is compensated. Sure, sure, I'm not going to tell them that a broker will steer buyers uh, based on that amount because they won't and they can't. But what I can say, and you're not telling me I can't, is that a buyer will still or steal or will steer a buyer, right? Can I say that a, that that a buyer will steer a buyer based on the amount that that broker is compensated, based on the amount their broker is compensated? Because if 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 they don't, then they're going to come have to come up with the difference. They're going to have to come up with the difference. So 
Yeah, this is going to be such an easy. Now, this is this is going to make things so easy. When you go to listing appointments, when we're in this world, all you have to do, guys, is bring the comps and all the data with you. Have receipts show up and say, as, as you're talking about the commission and the buyer broker commission and all the things, because they're going to be asking you. The, the It's so easy to paint the picture. Here are properties right here that did not offer buyer agent commission. Here's how long they've been on the market. Here's how long it took them to sell. Here's the prices they sold for. Here are properties, same type of properties, that did offer the buyer agent commission. Here's how quickly they sold. Here's the prices they sold for. Now, you make a decision, Mr. Seller, which way you want to go because I'm good either way. You tell me how you want me to work this. You want based on the data. And there's no doubt in my mind there's no doubt in my mind that at that time, we're going to see properties that offer buyer agent commission sell for more money in less time and buyers that, and, and properties that don't sell for less money in more time. And so my question to the seller is going to be, it's plain and simple. The data is in. We know what it is. Do you want to sell quicker for more money or do you want to sell slower for less money? Your decision. Either way, I want I just want to educate you so that you can make the best decision for you. I'm not trying to influence your decision. I it doesn't matter to me what decision you make. I'm here to help you do what you want to do, Mr. Seller. You tell me which way to run and I run. That's all it is. Cuz it it doesn't matter to me at the end of the day. I'm trying to help people do what they want to do. But here's the data and it's very clear. It's going to be very clear. So can I tell a seller so NAR, the National Association of Realtors, I have a question for you. Can I tell a seller that a buyer will steer, will steer a buyer uh, based on what their agent will be compensated on the deal? It's, it's just a question. It's just a question. Additionally, NAR states that realtors must be honest and truthful in their real estate communications and must not exaggerate, misrepresent, uh, misrepresent or conceal pertinent facts related to the transaction, including facts about broker commissions. Of course, of course, I agree. These points are all pertinent as the plaintiff's attorneys in the commission lawsuits argue that listing agents use a threat of steering to convince home sellers to agree to a much higher commission rates than they would otherwise, uh, helping convince the jury in the Sitzer Burnett lawsuit that there was evidence of collusion among uh, real estate players. Now, now here's my thoughts on that. I do think that was wrong. I do not think it's collusion because here's the thing in a, in a market where 99.9, .9, that's a number 99.9% .9 of sellers offer buyer agent commissions. It doesn't matter what that buyer agent commission is. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's two and a half or three, you can't, you're not going to steer in this world we live in right now. I don't know what it looks like after August 17th. If that in fact is the date. I don't know what it looks like in 2025, but as it is right now, every buyer gets to see every property online and they're going to say, I want to see that one. It doesn't matter what the buyer, I don't care if you're getting two or three. I want to see it. If I like it, I'm going to buy it. You can get whatever they're offering. It doesn't matter. But when we enter into a world where there are some listing and, and so, and so to use that to try to get sellers to pay more, I believe is wrong because you can't steer the buyers in today's world. But in tomorrow's world, if in fact we do have a mixed bag of some listings offering zero and, and some listings, which honestly, it's going to be a lot of listings offering buyer agent commissions. Very few going to be offering zero once the once the data comes in. It's like a for sale by owner. They're going to try it. They want to try it. They want to try to save money. I, who wouldn't? Let's test it. Sure. Awesome. Let's test it. But at the end of the day, the data is going to speak and we're going to be right back where we are. Um, but to use that in today's world, um, to say that, you know, commission fluctuating 1% or so matters and steers, that doesn't happen. Not, not in my opinion. Uh, but in tomorrow's world, it's a real conversation, but it's not against agents steering. It's against buyers steering their, their own self. Okay. Um, 
but I do not believe that 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 is grounds for collusion. All right. The FAQs also highlight that the Realtor Code of Ethics prohibits steering, noting that realtors must pledge themselves to protect and promote the interests of their client, putting their client's best interest before their own. A realtor must never put broker commission before a client's interest. I agree. And this is the part that's very confusing to me. It contradicts what they said earlier. While NAR may be confident the terms of its settlement agreement uh, will make steering obsolete, how? It appears that there may be some loopholes. It's actually going to create more steering. And it's not NAR's fault, right? It's, 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 it's the lawsuit's fault for trying to put this, force these rules in place. You know, I believe that, yeah, we, we, could, we, we could use the pendulum swinging back a little bit the other direction, possibly on some of these rules and regulations and the fact that you have to put a commission in MLS to put a, put a listing in MLS. I like that we went to zero on that, et cetera. But it's swinging too far the other way where it's going to make steering a real thing. Steering is not a thing right now. I mean, there's a lot of data out there, so much data. It's not even funny. Steering is not a thing right now. Steering will be a thing later, but making steering obsolete it appears that there may be some loopholes. Yeah. According to the NAR president, um, Kevin Sears, agents and their clients can amend their representation agreement. Get this, right? The NAR president, they can, they can amend their representation agreement, which opens up the possibility of agents and their clients charge changing how, their, how much their agent is being compensated if the seller of the property they are purchasing has decided to offer a higher amount of comp, a cooperative compensation uh, than what the buyer and their agent originally agreed upon. Do what? Although the FAQs do not address this, NAR does, does note that agents can have more than one agreement with their buyer clients. Okay. So additionally, while sellers will no longer be able to see. Okay. So, so earlier, so get this. So they're saying the president says that, that, that you can amend the agreement to, to, to compensate, to, to, to adjust if a seller's offering more than what's agreed on in the buyer agency agreement. Okay. So you can amend the agreement. Okay. But up here, they literally said that, that, that the fact that the buyer, uh, that the compass, they, that, that, that since, okay, since a broker working with the buyer cannot receive more than the compensation, the buyer, a, the buyer has agreed to in that agreement, the amount of any offer of compensation is irrelevant to the buyer broker compensation. Are you so, so up here you're saying because the buyer can't receive more than what the agreement says, then the compensation is irrelevant and it's not going to cause any steering. But then down here, we see that they say, well, but you can amend the, re the, the agreement if the, if the seller is offering more than what you agree to in the, in the thing. It's crazy. It's so much conflicting stuff going on. And this is like the icing on the cake right here. Additionally, while sellers will no longer be able to see, okay, they will no longer be able to see if or how much other sellers in the area are offering in cooperative conversation on the MLS, because that's one of the rules, you know, the DOJ and the plaintiffs and all they want, they want that buyer agent commission field out of MLS. They can still find the information and in other marketing material related to the property, which may lead to them offering large amounts of co cooperative conversation if they choose to go that route, if they choose to go that route. So basically, sellers will no longer be able to see uh, if or how much other sellers in the, in the area are offering cooperative conversation. Okay? This reduces transparency. The exact thing that they're trying to increase has been reduced now. And so we like you're not even going to like you're going to have to like search through like remarks and like other marketing materials to see there's going to be code words like, um, you know, the, the con seller concessions like and you don't even know what seller concessions is. Are they saying like they'll pay for like closing costs and prepaids or can I use this like there's there's going to be so much confusion and lack of transparency around this it's not even funny it's not even funny but again again let me be clear i'm gonna i'm gonna end this the same way i started this show me the new set of rules how i have to explain this to my clients because at the end of the day 
they that your clients need you. Your clients need you to help them buy and sell real estate. Now you need to get it out of your head that they may or that that, that they that they don't you know. Most agents fail because they fail to realize how badly people need them, and they think that the general public looks at us like we're salespeople, and you know we're just just get them away, get them away, get them away. No, no, people need you. They love you and you need to do everything you do to help them, which means you need to max out the amount of people that you talk to on a daily basis to, to understand their situation more than they do so that you can help them put together a plan to help them through whatever it is they're going through concerning buying and selling real estate. But at the end of the day, show me the new rules and watch me crush it because crush it, I will. The market is about to explode over the next year or two. It's going to be insane. If you don't go all in right now to expand your influence, you're going to be left behind. I hope this video gave you a different perspective. And until the next one, bye for now.